Hello and welcome to our video. I'm Rachel. I'm Noel. And we are the weekend homesteaders sharing projects that you can do in a weekend or in the case of our kitchen cabinets, like four or five weekends forever. <laughs> Took way longer than we thought it was going to. Uh, but stay tuned and we're gonna share with you how we went from this to this. Here we are back in time about to kick off the kitchen project. So step number one, clear out the kitchen. We were trying to decide last night if we could get away with not doing this, but with all the sanding and we're using a sprayer to do a lot of the painting, rather than have to hardcore wash everything, it was easier, although chaotic and you know, a little inconvenient for the next week or so to put everything into our dining room. We have completely cleared out all of our cabinets. We've actually not cleared out the drawers because the faces of the drawers unscrew. So we're just gonna leave the drawers mostly packed. We took some of our before <coughs> pictures and then we, I was going to draw a map of the kitchen, but Noel like made my photos into cartoon images of them because he is awesome. So somehow make a map of your kitchen. We then labeled these. So just labeled every single cabinet, every single drawer so that we can put like the hinges back together. If you're using the hardware, you're gonna wanna put those in each of an individual baggie as well. We're gonna take off all of the doors and I guess the drawers need it too actually because they have the screws holding the hardware on. Let's do this. All right, we've got the first door off. So just wanna show exactly what that looks like. We have our little baggie with all of the screws and hinges. The hinges are the same for everyone. I just like keeping them organized in their own bags that we know every single bag is going to have the appropriate amount of hinges and screws her door. Then here is the door that came off. And what we're doing to keep track of the doors is in the hinges where the holes go. So right here, that'll get filled with a hinge, but I've just written the number one inside of there. And then when we do the painting, we'll cover that with a little piece of painter's tape. One down, 30 to go. We've been working for about two hours to take down all of the doors and now Noel is still working hard on the drawer faces. I'm going to start wiping all of this wood down with a microfiber cloth and dish soap. Right, it is day two of the cabinet project and we are getting ready to use wood filler to fill these holes on all of the drawers. We're going to be using this Minwax high performance wood filler. We ordered new hardware to put on all of the doors and drawers. We're using like square pulls rather than knobs. So definitely have to fill all of them on the drawers because it's going to be two holes rather than this one that there is existing from the knobs on the doors we may regret this decision but we're gonna try to get away with not filling any of those holes since it will be pulls we're just going to use the existing lower holes as the bottom for the pulls and then just put one new hole on top we're gonna take a tiny little layer of grit off of these cabinets we're using 220 grit paper with an orbital sander on the lowest setting and we're just going to take a little bit off. Once I'm done with that, I am going to pass it off to Rachel. And she's going to use this uh, angled sanding sponge to try to get in here and try to take that little bit of grit off. So these cabinets, even though they're clean, they still have a tiny little bit of grease. Just like little tiny things we probably can't see or we can barely feel. And this is going to remove them. We're not, we're not trying to take off any wood. Um, just a tiny minimal stuff. No, not trying to take the gloss off. Just a tiny bit of stuff. We 
We finished sanding. I've got this nice little line right there. Took us about two hours, I'd say, to sand the doors and drawers. And now Noel is working on using the orbital sander to sand the cabinet structures in the kitchen. We did just tape up some tarp and plastic, looks like Dexter's lair in our kitchen right now, to keep any of that sand and dust from entering other rooms of the house. While he's finishing up that, I'm actually gonna start on priming some of the doors. Because they're two-sided, this is going to take a long time once we factor in drying. I'm gonna be applying the primer outside. I set up this table here with our painter's tripods. So what I'm going to do is just take some tack cloth. I'm going to wipe down each of those doors and drawers. Remember, they have already been wiped down with a wet cloth, but we just want to be super sure that there's no sand or dust on those as we're working. So I'm going to wipe those down one more time, lay them down on those painter's tripods, and then I'll be applying the primer with a nylon polyester brush. Into the garage we go. Here's the primer that we're going to be using. It is Styx Primer. This is what was recommended to us at the paint store, RVA paint that we went to. We're going to be using Benjamin Moore Advance paint in a satin finish on the end product of the cabinets. We'll probably, so they had recommended using the Styx Primer. It was pretty pricey, it was about $60 for a gallon. Welcome to day three. I've primed all of the doors and drawers, finished that up last night. Here they are, all laid out in the garage. And we also primed the structures, like the wooden frames of the cabinets inside the kitchen. Here is what all of that looks like. Now for the next step, we have to sand it all before we can paint. We're going to be using a sprayer to paint. So we'll get a really nice, clean, finished look. I think we're gonna do two coats of paint on it with the sprayer. Noel is gonna be practicing with the sprayer a bit because I'm a little nervous about that in the house and on the cabinets. So I'm going to be sanding again because we definitely want to sand a second time to make sure that we get a nice even finish from this primer. Then we'll vacuum everything and then wipe it all down with the tack cloth again before we paint it all. We're going to be doing this in kind of an annoying way that's going to take us four days to actually paint. So what we'll do is we'll paint all of the back sides. Then tomorrow we'll do a second coat on all the back sides. The next day, We'll paint a first coat on the front sides, and then the fourth day, we'll paint the second coat on the front sides. So it's gonna be a little crazy. Here is what everything looks like pre-sanding. Just words of the wise, when you're doing this project, like your primer's not gonna look good. That's a big thing, like don't freak out when you paint it on and it's streaky and it's uneven because that's primer. Primer's not made to have that nice finish that a lot of the paints are. We're on to the... Cool. Well, Justice with like a balloon. Just, just a... Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Give one to Justice, Ellie. Like this. Me and one. So we're on to the painting stage now. As I mentioned, we're gonna be using a sprayer. We're using the Wagner sprayer to do the painting. We've done a couple now, so we're confident in sharing our technique. We cover the hole. There we go. So then we'll know the number. We've sanded these down. We're going to vacuum them. <laughs> Then we're just using a piece of tack cloth. I think this one's what, 3M? It was like three for a dollar. Very cheap to just wipe them down immediately before you spray. It is day four of our cabinet painting project. Last night, we finished doing a first coat on all of the doors and drawers. 
I'm not sure if we'll get to a second coat today because we're the weekend homesteaders. We do projects on the weekend and it's now Tuesday and we're back to work. And it's really hard to do projects when you're working full time and taking care of children as well. So what we did today is we are tackling doing the frames of the kitchen just because we'd rather prioritize that so that we can get a little bit back to normal and like use our oven again because all that stuff is taped up right now. Figure we can live without doors and drawers for a couple of days. We can't live with our dining room a disaster zone any longer. So we're trying to just get that done right now. As soon as I got off work, I sanded down the primed frames in here, vacuumed them and wiped them down with a tack cloth. Then I took a two inch tapered brush and did all of the edges on kind of the insides of the frames. And now Noel has his Wagner sprayer and he's going through and putting the first count of spray on here. We are on day five of the project. Noel is painting the second coat on the back side of the doors and drawers. That's why it is so loud. We're expecting rain, which is why we're doing it like kind of in the garage under cover. Okay, it's been a few weeks since we checked in with progress on the cabinets. That's because we have kids and craziness. And as most projects go, we got delayed and it took a bit longer than expected. Um, but as you can see, we got a lot of these up. What we did was we finished doing the two coats on front and back of the drawers and doors. And then we started to attach the hardware. These are the poles that we got. They are two different types. On most everything, we did a six inch uh, Vail Sumner Street brass pole. And then we did two four inch poles just because those two drawers are significantly smaller than everything else. But doors for the most part and drawers have the same size. We did buy a Craig hardware jig to help put these on. It worked great for the four inch ones that we did first. Then we went to go and do the six inch ones and discovered that the jig only went up to five inches. So I actually wouldn't recommend that jig as much as we do love our other Craig jig for pocket holes. I think we just thought, oh, we love this brand, we'll go with it. It's bound to be a superior product. And unfortunately it wasn't for what we needed it for. So what we're doing now is we're just finishing up, putting the last few doors on. We're splitting the work sort of on this. I am just by hand screwing the hinges back inside and then Noel is using the jig in a very kind of inventive roundabout way to attach the poles on. Again, if you're doing this project, I'd recommend just getting a jig that works for the full size that you need it to. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're almost done and we are so excited to get our dining room back in order. This is a very exciting time for us. We are nearly done with the kitchen. Now, um, we got everything put back in its place, which feels so nice. And then I came in and did some touch-ups throughout the kitchen just with a little two inch paintbrush. There was one spot that I wanna point out uh, that we had some trouble with and that was just right here. Whatever they used to adhere this piece of granite to the wall here was terrible. And the primer and paint that we had just would not adhere to it. We would paint it on fine and then it would just slowly separate off of it. So we had to get a little creative here. And what we ended up doing here was actually taking some pretty high quality caulk, caulking the wall and then painting on top of the caulk. So close up, you can see it's a little messy looking um, because really I should have like sanded it, but we were towards the end of the project and I just wanted to be done with it. So this final step that I have now is to place bumpers on the doors and drawers just so that they don't 
get stuck or scuffed up at all. I'm going to be placing two on each of the doors, one here at the bottom and then one on the top. So I'll be placing four on the drawers, one in each of these four corners. One with the Scotch brand we found them on Amazon. They weren't very expensive. I think we got three uh, packs of these and they're just self adhesive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then we're actually finished with this project. It took us an embarrassingly long time. I'm just so thrilled with the end result. Let me get Nolan here. We'll give a final tour of the kitchen and wrap it up. All right, I went ahead and grabbed Noel so he can help tell all of you what we learned from this project and maybe what we would do differently in the future. I think the number one thing is that this took way longer than expected. I think if we didn't have kids, if we didn't have jobs, um, like if we'd taken the week off from work yeah. and sent the kids away, we probably could have done it in a week. Yeah, I'd say a week is possible, but you obviously have to wait a long time between coats. Exactly, uh, because you're waiting 24 hours between coats and that's basically three times they're waiting because there's mm. primer and then two coats of paint, plus two sides of each of the doors and drawers. It's a long time that you you can't make go faster. You, it doesn't matter how many people you have doing it, you have to wait for things to dry. I also just wasn't expecting, I think the mental drain of having the house in chaos for the time it took us to do the project uh, because it's our kitchen. Um, it was tough. It was tough having, we basically emptied our entire kitchen into our dining room. So then we also didn't have our dining room for, I think it probably took us about a month from start to finish until we got everything packed back in the kitchen. Yeah, but it was also nice because we threw a lot of stuff out. True, I mean, we did a lot, a lot of purging. A lot of organization. I mean, it, it definitely took a little longer because we found things we didn't want anymore or found things we needed and like bought them, you know? Exactly. I think price point was probably about what we'd expected. It was between what? Somewhere around five to six hundred dollars. And we'll put that full cost breakdown, actually look that up and put it down in the comments for you all, as well as all of the pro products that we use to complete the project. Overall, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's How great. You feeling? It makes her happy. I like the upgrade on our wine rack. Oh yeah, we did. I don't know rack. if I shared this. There was a built-in wine rack before mm -hmm. and it wasn't like put in correctly, so it didn't actually hold the wine. So we ended up taking that completely out and then just having this nice little enclave here where we put in our own wine rack that we had and then could fit a few, you know, little tchotchkes there as well. Yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah, the old wine rack was really bad. Yeah, I love the hardware. I just think overall this has really brightened up the space. Um, and I love the kitchen out. I love being in this room and I used to hate it. Because it's paint, it is going to get chipped. I think we bought about a, yeah, we bought a gallon of paint and have about half a pint left of it. Really? So we bought a little pint container so that we do have enough for touch-ups as they're needed. I'm guessing what? Once a year, every six months or so, I'll come through probably with my little two inch tapered brush and just hit some of those areas that need a little touch-up that get mm -hmm. scuffed. Do I ever want to do it again? No. Not anytime soon. No. no. Hell no. <laughs> Maybe like a bathroom cabinet because it's smaller, but I'm gonna be honest, this was a bitch. Mm -hmm. But I love the finished product. Worth it, but I never wanna do it again. <laughs> so we'll give a little tour now. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and follow us at on Instagram over at the Weekend Homesteaders. And be sure to share any photos if you go through this kitchen cabinet painting process as well. We'd love to see your results. All right, bye. bye.